Hey guys, my name is Jan and today I will be showing you how to motion track your flares in After Effects automatically. So first of all, we have our clip right here. Um, this is just a clip from Call of Duty. You can basically use any clip you want. And yeah, just make sure to import it into your composition. As you can see right here, we have it in the composition. I have some, um, I've put some Twitch on there, which I'm going to turn off for a moment, um, so that we just have the basic clip. So what we want to do right now is we want to track a flare so it automatically stays on this anchor thingy right here. And uh, we want to, first of all, there's the, um, the option to do that by hand, by just uh, putting on the optical flares plugin and just moving the position of the flare. But uh, especially if you do that for longer sequences, for like a sequence that is one minute long, it'll take you forever, and it won't look as smooth smooth as if you track it automatically. So um, right now I'll just jump right into it. Um, you want to create a new um, adjustment layer first of all. This is where we are going to put our um, flares on. You want to put the adjustment layer right above the um, clip. You want to drag it so it matches the, the clip size, the length of the clip, and um, then what we need is a null object. You want to create the null object right here. You want to move that over as well. And again, just cut it right to your needs. It should be about here, and drag it over to there. So that is about it. As you can see, the null object right now just stays in the middle. So what we want to do is we want to take the 2D tracker and um, track this anchor point right here throughout the whole clip. So the anchor point first appears on in this frame. I, yeah, it is this frame here. So you want to go to the tracker option right over here. If you don't have that tracker option, just go to just click on the clip, right click it, and click on track motion it'll open this uh, tracker option for you. So um, there's uh, different types of tracks that you can do. You can do a track um, where you have the position, the rotation, and the scale. If I enabled one of those two, two options, uh, I would get a second tracker point, so it could track the scale of something, or even the rotation. And yeah, so you also have the option to track the motion or to stabilize the motion. Stabilizing motion is needed when you want to stabilize your shaky footage, for example. So you just want to drag this anchor point right over here. This um, inner um, rectangle is uh, basically made to, yeah, basically what you want to do with this one here is put it on your target. So it is this anchor point right here. And the outer one just shows where the anchor point is going to be in the next um, frame. So we know that it's going to be right over here, so that way it'll stay in here. So don't make it like too small, otherwise it won't find the anchor. So yeah, so right now we have it um, on the we, we set it on the anchor, and then what you want to do is you want to go over here, go to the analyze option, and click on analyze forward it'll automatically track the anchor throughout the whole sequence. Okay, there was an error. That happens sometimes. Um, so just go to the frame where it, where you got the first error. That was right over here. Make it a bit smaller maybe. And then go um, one frame forward. And as you can see, it'll automatically adjust the other um, tracking path. Okay, over here it failed again. That just happens sometimes, it's absolutely normal. Um, that is because I've made the outer box a bit too big, so it thinks it has found something similar. So we just want to adjust this here a bit better, and this one here as well. Then just analyze one frame forward again, and just analyze it again. So as you can see, it tracks the anchor point perfectly throughout the whole clip. I actually don't need like the whole clip to be tracked, but uh, for this tutorial purpose, I'm just going to track the whole one. Should be done. Okay, uh, that is obvious. Uh, that is an obvious error. It 
it's just a different frame. The anchor doesn't even appear in the other frame anymore, so just don't give a damn about that. Um, so yeah, the tracking is basically done right now, and uh, as you can see, it just stays perfectly on the anchor. So go back to your first frame where it first appeared, that is right over here. Then you want to go to Edit Target. Then you want to pick the null object that you just created and click on OK. Then you want to hit Apply, X and Y, that's the only thing you need. And as you can see right here, the null object is perfectly tracked to the anchor. So what we've done right now, we've done simple 2D tracking, we've just tracked the anchor. But um, now we're going to face a problem which most of the people uh, didn't really talk about in their tutorials because most of the people just uh, actually parent the um, adjustment layer with a flare to the null object which is total bullshit in my opinion and those people should just think about what they're doing I'm just going to show you right now real quick what actually happens if you do that so I'm going to go get those flares you want to put the optical flares on your adjustment layer It'll load the plugin and then down here under render mode you want to change it from on black to over original as you can see right now we have the flare over here so if I just put the flare on here and um, parent the adjustment layer to the null layer what is going to happen is this it is going to stay there for a moment and that's about it and that is the error that everybody seems to get when doing this and that is why I've sat down and thought about it and I was like hey there's got to be there's got to be a fix for this there's got to be a way to do um, flare tracking inside After Effects without using Buju or Mocha so um, I've came up with this idea here and uh, what you want to do is you first of all you want to unparent the adjustment layer in case you've parented it so right now we have the position of we have two different types of position right here we have the center position you just want to leave that you just want to change that in case you have like a um, an outer frame where the whole thing is happening in. So that that is just like the um, from the lens, like the middle of the lens. And since this is just one shot, you just you just really want to leave this. So yeah, and this one here is where the flare is actually going to be. So if I had to track this by hand, I would go like this. I would keyframe the position and go to the next frame and then drag this over again and obviously it is not really smooth it's, it, it's not really quick either and uh, especially for long sequences it can take a lot of time and it just doesn't look good either so there's no point doing this so that's the reason why I'm doing this tutorial so you wanna go ahead and go to this adjustment layer down here go and click on effects optical flares then go to the position X and Y and you want to hit ALT and click on the stopwatch while doing that and it'll open up the expression menu down here the expression menu down here is really, really useful I um, started like using the codes um, a while ago it can actually help you quite a lot if you are parenting values if you are trying to um, automate like uh, to make things go quicker to, to kind of like um, automize uh, stuff so it'll automatically do a screen pump for example um, when there's like a whatever a beat in the like a, a beat in the song like a yeah so <laughs> I'm sorry for that but um, it's really useful you can trust me and if you have some time you should probably look into that so what you want to do right now is just go to the null object and click on like hit P which stands for position and as you can see here we have all those little keyframes right there since we just tracked the position of the anchor point and then applied it to the null object as you can probably remember we hit apply on the tracker option so right now we have the position here and yeah, that's the last step. It's really easy. You want to go back to your first frame where the flare first appears. It's right over here. We have the null object set up perfectly. We just want to adjust um, the position once again. Just click on 
um, click on Alt, Alt and stop, stop watch again and uh, just adjust it. So just to make sure it's in the right position, we're just going to put it there. Then hit it again and just parent this value here to the null object's position. Then just click it and as you can see, Flare is perfectly tracked and, at, and moves like it was in 3D space. As you can see here, we have the other Flare um, elements acting like it was 3D space. It's absolutely amazing in my opinion. I was so stunned when I first um, discovered this and I was like, hey, you gotta make a tutorial on that because I haven't seen a tutorial on how to do this here. I've watched a lot of tutorials on the internet and every single tutorial just well dealt with the topic on how to um, parent the adjustment layer to the null object, which as you can see is totally bullshit. Um, there's another option, like, there's another way you can do this here, like, track the flares. You can go into Buju, track everything, and then import it, uh, like, import the tracked um, scene back into After Effects, where you'll have all those little um, camera trackers, like, all of the different points, and then set up a flare in 3D space, and that'll work as well. There's another way you can do this is... Um, you um, create a, uh, a light, a 3D light in here, and then you want to track, like you want to, um, you want to make the light, and then put it next to the um, null object, and then just parent it to the null object, and then you want to go to the adjustment layer with the um, flare on it, and then you want to go down to the source type, and you want to click on track lights because that way it'll actually look for the lights in the uh, composition it'll tell this uh, plugin where the lights are and where the light is coming from and that way you can also do it but I think this one here is a lot quicker and the light uh, the lights version hasn't worked for me very well so far because the lights are actually 3D and you don't want to mess around with the, with the 3D space too much because we're actually just doing 2D tracking right here which is absolutely enough and yeah, I'll just put the put it back to the normal settings, 2D. As you can see here, flare is perfectly tracked throughout throughout the whole clip. And yeah, that's it. Let's go back to the main comp. Take a look at it again. Yeah, perfect. So that's been it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial here. If you have any questions or would like to leave some feedback, feel free to do so. Um. I love reading comments, I love uh, hearing your feedback, your critics. Um, I know that my voice doesn't really sound very well, but <laughs> I hope you, <laughs> you can still understand everything. And yes, that's it.